Welcome to Streamtown. <laughs> Population us. Uh, heck yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, hello, I'm Dominic. Um, this is Jeff here. It is our Wednesday night making a game stream. Uh, it's been a little while. It's been two. I guess it's the the like the break was a little. It's two days longer than our normal one, but it fe it's felt like it's it's been a little while. Uh, it's been since forever. Played, yeah, since we played StarCraft last. Um, so I have some big news. I yeah. uh, <clears throat> I ordered a desk finally. Yes. So it, it's funny because I was uh, I, I I went as far as like y you got a gaming PC right. Mm -hmm. Um, my brother caught wind of that and he's like, okay, dude, I have this idea. We should, you know, he lives in Seattle, but he. He's undeterred, right? He's like, we should build the same gaming PC like over FaceTime. Like, I'll build okay. mine, you build yours. <clears throat> and uh, so I've had all this like, you know, plus work and everything. I'm like, gosh, I gotta stop working on my kitchen table. So <laughs> what do I do? Like, I don't, I have to like, because I don't really have space for a desk in my apartment, right? And I've got my bedroom, which fits the bed, and the place where we store clothes, and then I have my living room, which is totally multi-purpose. I do have an electric piano, which, given the amount that I play it, is a bit of an excess <laughs> and a bit of like a, a space consumer. But like, it's so cool to have a little piano, right? It's um, really cool. I wouldn't want to give that up. So I went as far as like going onto Craigslist to like look at apartments. I was like, how, how, what's the scene like right now? <laughs> and I don't, I don't know if you've ever been forced to look for apartments under duress, you know, just like for whatever, I guess it's most of, most of the time you look for an apartment, right? Mm -hmm. who, who likes moving? But um, it was like, oh man, everything is like half as good as my current apartment. You know, it was either just like more expensive and less space or, you know, kind of weird or, or whatever. Um, You've got a nice place. I do like my place. Yeah, the location yeah. is great. Yeah, I wouldn't give it up. Yeah, location's great. It's not too expensive. Um, so, so I bit the bullet. Yeah, I, I just bought a desk. I, I, I did the whole, like, I'm going to measure my living room and I'm going to measure every piece of furniture and mm -hmm. stick it into, like, a, you know, an iPad app that lets me map things out. And I did all the, I did all these, like, rituals, basically. It's like a cleansing, em emotional cleansing ritual to enable me to buy the desk. Mm -hmm. So I bought the desk. <laughs> Which means, for the consequences of the stream, that uh, we will have better resolution when I share a screen than we have right now, right? Oh, that's great. That's actually mm -hmm. really cool. Uh, are you gonna are you gonna buy a monitor? I will buy a monitor. Uh, okay. The desk is what I can put a monitor on top of. Uh, great. And I, I, I may pull the trigger on that gaming PC as well. I think you should. And I was gonna say, if you're gonna buy a monitor for the stream, you should get something that is 16 by nine instead of the yeah. 16 by 10 Mac stuff. Because then I think we'll be winning. How does that work if I plug my Mac, in, plug a Mac into it? Is it fine? It, just does, it does the right thing, yeah. Because like right now you're looking at, if you look at the stream, it's showing your screen at 16 by 10. Yeah. And my screen is 16 by 9. So you're like sort of uh, letterbox, vertically letterbox inside. I have to imagine that the, the display that I have at work sitting on my desk is probably 16 by 9, right? The 16 by 10 display is probably pretty rare. Is it? Yeah, it's only the weird Apple one, I think. OK, got it. What about that LG one, that, that 5K LG one that we had when we worked together? I'm pretty sure the, the LG 5K is 1610. Because mm. it only worked with Max, right? Yeah, aspect ratio. I'm just going to Google it real quick. Yeah. Uh, no, it was. it is 16 by 9, so you're good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The idea of like having a sixteen by ten like external display is very idiosyncratic, right? It's probably just, just tops, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, honestly, I'm thinking about getting rid of this gaming monitor and upgrading even further because it's not very good for work. <laughs> oh no. So, uh, how much was your gaming monitor, if you don't mind my, my asking? Like four hundred bucks. Okay, because that's about how much I want to spend on the monitor. <laughs> you know. Um, I, so I, uh, let's see, I came up with the one I wanted, which is the HP Z27. Wow. You've made the call. 
Uh, so it's because it does um, power delivery over USB C for Macs. Yeah. But also just has like HDMI ports, so it works like a normal monitor for Windows. So. Oh, nice. It's, yeah, right. It's like it's a real monitor that kind of works like the LG one, but isn't 5K. There is an LG 4K that I use at at, at the office, or used past tense. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm ever going to go back to work uh, physically, um, but. Uh, I, anyone uh, ever. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I uh, I think it has HDMI in, and it ha- it does do power delivery because I just plug in one thing to my Mac, and it's you're off to the races. <sighs> It's great. So nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I might very well do that because I'm annoyed at the rat's nest of cables I had to make for this thing. So. Yeah, I see. I'm sorry if I'm sniffly. For some reason, I have a little bit of congestion today. I don't think it's the virus. I hope it's not. Nah, it's... Dude, it happens to me like every two weeks. I'm just like, <laughs> oh no. Like, God, I have coronavirus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but then I, then I take a Zyrtec and I realize that it's probably still allergies. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like you've made some big changes. Tell me yeah. about them. I made some small changes. Uh, yeah. I added a, I added a map selector. Okay. Um, mostly just so we could like experiment with some other stuff. We had this nice little uh, sandbox we played with last time. Yeah. Uh, and I thought it'd be nice to be able to switch between that without having to like overwrite the entire map file. Yep. Um, and also to do that, I added a reset button to the map editor that tosses out local storage. So if I do this and I click reset, what happens? Oh my god, that's awesome. I know, we needed it. I was tired of going to the console to, to delete the local storage to get new maps. So right. that's going on. And then lastly, I yep. uh, exercised our player or our um, renderables um, mm-hmm. framework to uh, give the turret a moving turret and a stationary body. Yes, I see that now. So it looks, looks, it looks a little angrier uh, than before. <laughs> the the yes, red really like brings it out. Warning signs. I, I, I like our commitment to primary colors as well. It's a, yeah. it's a strong commitment. Yeah, art, uh, art direction comes later. Yeah. So I want to talk about a couple of those things because I think there, there's a lot that's interesting there. Um, maybe the first one is about uh, kind of the strange bedfellows between React and our own rendering engine, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which I, I think is actually kind of a bridge that you initially crossed with the particle tool. Right, yeah. like how do I get the game running, and then how do I also, or at least game-ish things running, uh, and then also have like a, a web UI basically. Mm-hmm. And so, um, what was your first of all? What's the communication between this widget here and the the game? Because clearly, if I if I make a change here, there's some signal that goes to the game, and, and now we're in like a new situation, right? Ah, there isn't. Um, it's so the the game is reading the current map from local storage. Uh, okay, which was you know kind of a nice that that is going to be our persistence layer. So I felt like adding that to the game was not a huge uh, a huge lift because we have no other way to store data. Um, and uh, on change, that control object actually writes to local storage and just reloads the page. So oh, I see. So we yeah, are just I, doing like a, a like a full page reload. Oh, I see. I, you can see it actually in the tab. You mm-hmm. can see the little reload request there. Yeah, so I tried to keep it like, I didn't want to like dig into UI stuff because I do feel like our UI should be part of our game layer and probably not a bunch of HTML elements. Um, yeah. This was really just like potentially in like the debug control world where like we could hit a tilde to bring up this menu or something. Yeah. Like this thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, very interesting. I, I ended up using the same technique for like opening and closing or, or like opening new new maps in in the in the mm. map editor, right? It's just like reload the whole page with a map sort of like stuck in the loading slot of local storage, right? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, and technically, we wouldn't have to do that, right? We could keep the same page in memory, but I didn't want to worry about cleaning things up, right? Like I, like I kind of didn't want to like worry about like oh I forgot to, like I cleaned up this one object, but there's another one that's dangling there that I didn't remember about, and then after you load a couple times, it run, you run out of memory or something like that, right? Yeah, and I really I couldn't justify like mucking up the game loop to add any of that into it versus just like yeah you know, just get us to our debug maps faster. Yep. Yep. Totally. Um, yeah, so, so so maybe maybe we'll we'll embrace the web fully, and every time you change to a new level, it's like a new page load. <laughs> oh no! Oh. Yeah, 
Terrible, right? We could. We could. I dislike it, but we could. I, I dislike it as well. I, I think at some point we do have to have some kind of mature state management system where we are kind of blowing up the whole world and like yeah rebuilding it and that sort of thing yeah one well, one of the keys one of the you know key additions here is that maps is now a um like an index object that loads a couple things in there so we could actually like the game could address different maps if it wanted to yeah it's not you know it's not super invasive it just changes how we access our data but yeah i think i'd really love to have like a load new map function at some point where we drop this in and you know, the game takes you to the next level. Totally. Um, I'm going to blow my nose really quickly. It's come to that point. I'll, I'll put it on mute, so hopefully... Uh, I, I don't actually care if it's on stream. It's human bodies, uh, man. Anyways, we we yeah. all got them. We, we all, all got, got bodies. All right, just one second. I'm sorry. Okay, no, follow your heart. Oh man, that's glorious. Just fluids leaving the body, right? <laughs> uh, glad, glad you don't got the thing. Gotta, gotta stay yeah, healthy. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing I wanted to ask you about um, was the was the turret, right? Um, so yeah, if I take myself to the turret, uh, we've got oh, one right. file for it. I forgot. I. Uh... I split this up into multiple components to match Fantastic. the players. So our, our, yeah. our mover and our shooter are sort of where they belong, which That's is great. elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so there's a renderable for, uh, mm -hmm. and we've got renderables, plural. Mm -hmm. And, oh, cool. So basically... Um, it's the first use of our circle primitive. Oh, <laughs> I, I didn't even realize we didn't. Oh no, we the particle emitter uses circles, right? Do we? I'm not sure we pass them into the renderable though. Do we? Maybe we do. Maybe maybe um, you refactored that when I wasn't looking. Uh, yeah, I, I think the renderer uh, particle emitter. Yeah, we. Just oh, great. Never mind. At any oh, rate, that's it's, that's great. That means particles could drop any renderable in there. Oh, how delightful. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. Um, so, but more circles, more power to us, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we do have this notion of a turret transform, um, which yeah, comes from the actually, orientation, yeah. Actually, that's just e.transform.modelworldtransform. <coughs> you could delete all of that. That's from when we need to have two transforms for the player. Oh, I see. I see. Yes. Because uh, transform itself provides a model world transform. Mm -hmm. I forgot. Um, does it? Yep. It's exactly that code. Oh, I didn't realize that. OK, so this is, this is cool. So basically, um, there's no orientation on the base of the turret, which is why we can just like draw it consistently with the position, right? Exactly, yeah. Got it, got it. Now, if we want to do something fancy with the tank, right, where the tank can rotate it's both its, I don't know what you call the, bo the body of the tank plus the turret of the tank, mm -hmm. or the cannon of the tank, um, then we need to maintain two different orientations separately, right? Correct, which, which is what we do. We pass, a, we pass the shooter object in and grab its orientation uh, in the tank renderable. Yeah. I'm I'm still not sure how we want to eventually factor those types of things. Like especially if we do like co more complicated animations, I'm not 100% sure. Somehow I, I I think that basically a lot of like 3D models, which is kind of like what we're we're, we're doing like parameterized geometry, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what they'll do is they'll say like, here's my model, and I'm gonna expose a parameter. They're almost like writing a function. They're almost like, like it's almost like an artist defining like a function or, or letting the, the whatever renders be a function of stuff that you pass in. Mm. Um, and then I'm going to expose this rotation parameter, um, which you can slide around, right? And then the game can feed that rotation parameter like whatever, whatever it wants, something mm -hmm. like that. And then you can imagine making that, you know, composable so it becomes arbitrarily complex, right? And then that's why you can do like whole bodies and people moving around, that sort of thing, right? Yeah, that's rad. Cool. 
That's what, are we, what are we working on today? So I was about to ask the exact same question. You you mentioned the idea of, you know, well, we, t- we talked a little bit earlier about UI. Um, and That's true. And, and we could finish this game loop, too. Like, what, what do we do now? Yeah, so we're missing kind of, like, the things we have a simulation we don't have a game right like we don't have the things that 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 sort of embrace the user experience mm-hmm. um now whether we like so i think one thing we could do is we'd show health oh that's um, a great idea yeah although you know to, to be honest conceptually i love i love trying to play with the idea that you don't show health like i love games that do that you know like um but uh I think just for the exercise of having it there, it would be nice to have like a health meter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we can also do something like, what happens <clears> when you <throat> die? Do you reset the level? Do you spawn somewhere? And that is its own exceptionally rich and complex thing that we could do as well. That sounds great. As long as we get to drop the Dark Souls you died text in there. Yeah, well, uh, did, did we not do that for 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 the breakout? I don't think so. We didn't have any text. No. That's too bad. I wanted like, yeah, just sort of like the fade in slowly, you died. <laughs> and it takes like 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yep, into it. We, sh- we should make a really slow death animation for the tank. Too. Or like a really obnoxious like tips loading screen. Where you can like <laughs> scroll through like the latest social media tweets from our community team. Why? Why do you games? I've I've never once been like that. Tip you showed me on the loading screen was very interesting and helpful. Just they should just stop. I I think it's just like thumbing through a magazine while you're waiting for the dentist, right? It's it's that sort of thing. I guess. Uh, yeah. Maybe well, you think of the past. Supposedly, uh, you know, the new consoles they have I/O that is fast enough to not even like. Is that now? Is that going to stop it, or does it just mean people will try to shove more through the I/O system so that they have long load times? So that that is a really excellent question. That is that is the, like like you know like okay, well I have more money, I'll just buy more expensive th- and more things, right? Like that's what, exactly. So, but what I'm told is, or this is granted, random lobsters or hacker news commenter, <laughs> but what I'm I, I read the statistic that the new console, at least the PS4, which has I think a meaningfully faster IO pipeline than the, the Xbox. It's, it's They're both like, like insane, but, 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 but the PS4 It's like hundreds one, of gigabits faster though. Like, I don't understand those numbers. Yeah, it, it seemed like it was like 25% faster or 33% faster. Like it's a, it's a significant amount, but the claim is that you can fill memory from IO, like completely replace the context mm-hmm. of main memory in two seconds. Holy shit. So I, I do think that, you know, your question is a good one, but if you set, like, how quickly you can fill memory as the kind of bar, then that's yeah. absolute, right? There's none of those relative effects of, like, okay, well, I can do crazier stuff if you're going to give me crazier resources, right? Uh, that's cool. So they've actually, like, they've kind of capped it in a nice way where it's like, in fact, this is 10 times faster, but we only put twice as much memory in here. So, like, yeah, math, your load times have to be faster. Don't mess it up. That's cool. And ha- how much memory do they have? These new consoles, 64? Uh, no, 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 that's, that's insane, right? That's insane. 64 would be very expensive. I think so, because like, this gaming PC I just bought has 16, and that's everyone's like, 16 is all you need. Like That's way too much for games. I'm like, I don't understand, but okay. PS5 main memory. And I think it's shared memory between the GPU and the CPU, right? Um, yeah. 5.5 gigabytes per second is fast. And, and they, they do, like, uh, hardware compression as well, right? They have, like, compression in the I.O. controller. So um, tell me the stats. 16 oh, yeah. gigabytes of memory. Um, there's also no separation between texture memory or, or whatever, the GPU memory and main memory as well. So there's probably, mm. there's no need to, like, load a texture into main memory to do the file access and then like shuttle it over to the GPU, uh, which is classically what you have to do to get something from a peripheral, like your disk, onto the GPU, right? Wow, so c- hardware compressed, 
from the disc, two seconds felt memory bus. That's silly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna, it, like, the I'm gonna buy one probably of these. Was, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm going to buy one of these. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's ugly. It's good. It's, it's very ugly. <laughs> and, and like, uh, like, rather unwieldy in its size. Mm-hmm. I, I think with the with the the Xbox Series X, mm-hmm. that doesn't really roll off the tongue, does it? Um, Neither did the Xbox One or the One S. They, <laughs> uh, people who name things should be fired from every company, as far as I can tell, except PlayStation. <laughs> right. So the Series X, they just said, you know what? This is just a gaming PC. It's just a little mm-hmm. gaming PC. We're just gonna go for it, right? Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, sorry, just to bring us back to the game real quick. Uh, yeah. We want to, maybe, let's maybe do HUD. That might be the easier thing to start out with. Yeah, um, let's do it. Do we want to do React UI or do we want to do Game Entity UI? I, I think we should build it in the game because yeah. React really shouldn't be a dependency of this sucker. Okay, that sounds great. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have a kind of flexible play like viewport mm-hmm. here, right? Um, if we do UI, how would we want to position our... Hmm. Yeah, maybe um, I guess we could think about attaching stuff to corners. Mm-hmm. We can probably, we can probably get a constant offset off that. I wonder if we should have a minimum size for the play field to make the UI work so you can't actually shrink it down to like 100 by 100 pixels. Yeah, because the game's not playable anyway at that point. Yeah, maybe the first thing we can do is maybe sidestep the whole question and just have the health meter offset from the upper left corner. Let's do it. Yeah, and then if we have stuff in the like that depends on where this point is, like the lower right corner, which means that either the it depends on the right side or the bottom, then we have to solve that whole. We have to we have to crack that nut. Right. Ah, fair. You're right. Sticking stick the upper left means we don't have to think about a single thing. For yeah, that's pleasant. Uh, I, I'm thinking that making a responsive game is not high on our, our list of priorities, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and maybe I even think fixed viewport size at some point might be mm-hmm. might be the way to go, right? Yep. Um, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, although it helps for development that we have kind of a flexible UI, right? Oh, I I really like it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe the way we can think about that too is that the if we want to think, have a fixed viewport of like a square, perhaps we actually keep a square on the screen that is like this is the UI and the game, but like we kind of draw outside of it for ourselves in debug. Yeah. Most so most like debug most it. debug draws have a, a similar notion, which is this the safe box, mm-hmm. which is the box that you are generally guaranteed across across hardware that will actually be displayed. Um, and I guess TV to TV, it matters. And it mattered a lot in the CRT days, for sure, right? Mm-hmm. When you when you kind of didn't really know how much of the, the video signal was actually going onto the tube, right? Right, right. Um, but they still have that. They still have safe boxes for modern LCDs and stuff like that. So I'm oh, not yeah. sure. Yeah. For some reason, HDMI TV is still crop. I don't. I don't understand why an HDTV would need to crop the edges, but they do. It's weird, right? Um, yeah. And it's why when you have a good TV, get a lot of game UIs that where they appear to float on top of the the play field, like seem like they're way too far from the edges of the screen. They seem like they're kind of floating inwards a little bit. Yep. Um, exactly. Which is weird. Um, okay. So uh, let's talk about uh, so. Right now, the way that we draw things is everything is assumed to be in world space, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, where's my renderable? Here's my render. Mm-hmm. And all the renderables that we process, currently is this, it's this line right here, right? And nice. we also t- we also basically tell the renderer, hey, this is the current situation. We're setting the transform to this. Mm-hmm. So we probably want this is all world space, right? All of yep. this stuff. Yep. 
So we probably want like UI render to go here, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, the and that, transform and that is in camera space. we need to, yeah, the, and the the space now needs to be viewport space, right? It needs to be in view space, I think. Yep. Right. Um, and so, what does the transform look like there? Is it just the identity? I think so. Matrix? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what does this take? A mat two D. Submat two D dot identity. And mat two D is probably not even imported. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And I think oh this this takes something right. Mm -hmm. Still unhappy. No, it's better. Okay, cool. It just took a while. Unusual. Mm -hmm. And these are all my null, forbidden non-null assertions here. It's fine. Um, yeah. We'll get there. We're getting there. Okay. Um, and then let's just. Hmm. Uh, what is a renderable again? Is it is it just one of these things, right? I think so. Yeah. And then I actually need to look up what the, all this is. Correct. The rect has a fill style, a stroke style, position, and dimensions. Um. Position is top left, I bet. Yeah. Let's just try this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, we want it. We want it like kind of narrow. Yeah. So like a hundred ten or something, or fifty ten. Yeah. I was thinking that's width and height. Uh, and then the fill style, let's just make it something obnoxious for now. Great. OK. Uh, what does it like about that? Uh, Type does not exist on renderable. Primitive. Ah. And then position. Is it pause? Yeah. Hey. Cool. That is obnoxious. And, and if you then... move around, it stays there because we are in camera space. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. OK. So what do we want this to do? Shouldn't be that big, first of all, right? No, it's a little, a little large, yeah. Let's do half, right? Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, should it uh, should there be like two bars, like a like a top and a bottom, so that you can see a decrease? Mm -hmm. Like it starts out starts out full and then like reels a gray one underneath as it gets hit. Yeah. Um. This is where that's great. So we'll we'll draw two, right? Mm -hmm. And then which way does it drain? Probably drains towards the bottom. I think so. Yeah, it's like a classic Diablo potion style. And then so this one is going to be set. The this one's going to be maybe set down a little bit more. Let's set it down by. 50, right? Mm -hmm. or, let's, or by 45 or 35. Yeah. And then. Sounds good. Looks like that. Cool. And now we want to drive this based on the, the health of the player, right? Yes. OK. So uh, we're going to do this. We're going to cheat it. This and put this all in the game level first. Once we get a drawing and working the way we want, we can factor it out into an, an, its own entity. That's that great because because my next question is going to be like, should this be a game entity? Yeah. 
Uh, damageable. Oh, dot unwrap. Mm. I'm surprised it's not fine. This damageable. Dot health. Do we have any way of knowing what its maximum health is? No. Hmm. That seems like an oversight. Um. Wait. What even? This is the system. Uh, the damageable ah. uh, component is here. And what we want to do is let's do max health. Yeah. Is that always going to be a constant that we care about? I mean, if a turret is ever to heal, right now we have let's turrets just, and players and walls. Yeah. Still. And did we have a lerp function? I think we do. OK, great. And what I'd like to do is I think So this is just the, the opposite of lerp. And it's basically given a position, what's the alpha? Because what we would like to know is what is the alpha from 0 to your max health? And then use that as the alpha into another lerp that tells you how much the cyan bar should be filled up. Right? Oh, cool. Something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so what is this? What is the alpha? We basically want to say, um, Is it position minus min divided by max minus min? That tells you how far along the line between min and max the position is? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So. Const. Uh, Let me turn off the god rays in this room real quick. You can't. They're on the stream. They look great. <laughs> god is currently in South Berkeley, ladies and gentlemen. You pay a lot for that ray tracing. Yeah. <laughs> Alpha equals uh, inverse lerp. I believe we can pull this in. Oh, it yeah. really had to think about that. It really did. Yeah. Huh. What's going on on my computer right now? Let's take a look. It's always a good question. Eh, tuple. Tuple's exercising it. Like, I, I, maybe it is entirely feasible that Tuple's just a bit slower now. They've they've been adding some tchotchkes, right? <laughs> Useful ones. Yeah, it's gotten. I, I find it's actually been a little more consistent recently, and I appreciate the extra buttons they've added. So I can yeah. take a little slowdown. Windows Server also, whatever this is, I'm, I'm guessing this is the, the Mac OS. That's your entire Mac UI, which yeah. the game might actually be chewing into that. Who knows? Yes, because the GPU time is quite high here. Although Firefox is also consuming GPU. I'm not sure what. Hmm. Anyways, um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure the 2D UI in Mac OS is also using the GPU for some reason, right? It is. It always has been, yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, let me get the damageable really quick, um, mm -hmm. just so that's handy. Nice. Um, and then I'm going to do this. We're going to inverse lerp between 0 damageable dot max, max health. Yeah. This should probably be a function on the damageable. It's just pure state reading, right? Mm -hmm. but, OK. It is unhappy. 
Uh, it's it's okay now. Boy, VS Code is really having a hard time right now. Yeah, bummer. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and then what we want is basically the height of the fill bar, right? Mm -hmm. And then minimum is zero. What what should be the max? Maximum was like, do we say? It's a hundred right now. Yeah. Right. And uh, <laughs> and that's max fill. So, oh right, yeah. This is fill, fill. And then this is a tricky one. The top is going to be. Uh, it's f 15 plus max fill minus fill. Yep. Boom. Is that right? Uh, I think it's plus fill minus max fill. Mm. Okay. Mm, well, we, 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 the top of it. The top of it is, you're right. It might have worked both ways. Uh, no, probably not. All right, let's see if that renders. Uh, lerp not included. It's amazing that the JavaScript runs. I guess it's Isn't not running, weird? right? Yeah. What are my cats doing? That, did that happen? It did happen. Nice. Um, still not happy. Is that our LERP or is it someone else's LERP? It should be our LERP. <laughs> yep. Replace zero max fill inverse LERP with what? Oh, it wants you to hit enter. It wants you to format it. It's just okay. a lot of spaces. <laughs> All right, so now we need to take some damage. Time to get hit. Wow, dude, that's cool. The screen shake really makes that work, by the way. Yeah. Great. Nice. That's cool. Um, I would love to make this a little bit translucent. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. OK. Um, Uh, I mean, what? This always confuses me. Um, it, it's zero to two fifty-five for the first three, and then zero to one for the last one. Is that yeah. right? Uh huh. I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of cockamamie UI is this? It's. I guess they were just trying to compromise, right? Yeah. Between the people that, that were like, it's just floats. Seriously, it's floats. We're fine. <laughs> and the people that were like, well, it's hex, right? Hex goes from zero to FF. Well, you know, honestly, it is. It might be that, like, yeah, the zero to FF numbers are very specific for colors for the web. And in fact, the alpha is like the 3D blending layer that gets added. So this might actually be maximally accurate. E it's dumb, <laughs> but it might be true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess there's like a performance thing, right? Like basically you don't want for every pixel, you, you only want to have a byte for every one of these things. Right. But then you kind of only want to bite for the alphas. Well, I, I, how many? I mean, that's that's 16 million colors, man. How many? How many <laughs> colors in the alpha channels do you need? Really, alpha alpha should just be numbered from one to ten because I've almost never written anything other than 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, or 0 0.4. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. 
So uh, let's do uh, MDN. They had a color picker, right? Yeah. Color picker tool. What do we want our background to be? Mm -hmm. Look at that. Background should be kind of glassy, right? Maybe just a gray? A transition I think gray. gray. OK. So maybe a lighter gray, right? So let's do 200, 200, 200, 0 0.5, 4, 5, yeah. yeah. And then this one will be RGBA, probably be just kind of straight up red, do you think? Yeah, maybe like a nice, nice bloody red. Bloody red, kind of darker, yeah. 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 192, 36, 36. And we can even make this translucent, but maybe a little bit less so, right? <laughs> yeah. It's going to be very hard to see through the two of them stacked up. So, ah, but but it's there just a bit. That's nice. Um, yeah. Take a little damage. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like it. Yeah. I do, too. I think the background could be almost a little bit more translucent. Haha! -ha! Resurrected because I'm changing code. How does I say you just just in the nick of time? Is that too is that too translucent now? Difficult to see. Mm, it could be Look nice if we put if we put a border on there. It might be nice too. Oh yeah. Which we could draw right away with the stroke style if we needed to. We could. That's, that feels like too much. I think with a 0.3 and a stroke style, it'll mm -hmm. be nice. Stroke style. And what is the notation here? Uh, still color, whatever you want. Does it not have a thickness as well? No. Our renderer would have to have a stroke width property. Oh, yes. OK, got it. So this just, it's just stroke style really just means color. Although we can do a gradient as well, so technically, yeah, I get True. it. True. Uh, okay. Maybe approaching black. Maybe it mm -hmm. is black. Let's see how that looks. It's going to be intense. Um, yeah. So let's lighten it a little bit, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Neat. Is that really what one pixel looks like? I don't know if uh, the stroke style is one pixel. It might be two. Well, it's about as thick as our debug draw, right? Oh, it might be one then. Yeah. Hmm. And I'm also going to make this translucent. Nice. Hey, that looks cool. OK, that works pretty well. What yeah. do you think? I like it. Yeah. It's a nice health bar you got there. <laughs> OK, so shall we factor this into its own entity? Yeah, let's do it. OK. Um, OK, so our entities. Because you can imagine wanting to, have, wanting to have health bars that like kind of float over the guy you just attacked or something like that. So we'll call it the player health bar, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's a good idea. Uh, make and how do we, how do we, how are we doing this? Are we um, taking the game? Oh, we're returning an entity. That's right. OK. Hmm. Um, all right. And then basically what we're going to have is mm 
Mm-hmm. Doesn't want to give you anything? Come on. Oh, it, it finally finished. I don't love I don't love that the auto import is not doing a uh, workspace relative. I know, I thought I fixed that too. And then uh... nice. Mm -hmm. Sorry, got. Semicolon uh, muscle huh? memory from work. Oh, Red up transform, and then. So this is kind of interesting. The renderable. Which thing doesn't need to beat this. Right, we actually don't even need an entity for this, I don't think. Here's why. Okay. Because, I mean, really, this is just a function that takes the player, right? Yeah, we have systems. Hmm. And our, like, renderings, we don't, actually, the renderer is not a system, but it could be, very much could be, right? Mm -hmm. um, So we can think of systems as essentially just taking stuff that we would have just put into the game like this. Mm-hmm. But putting it into a different file. Does that make sense? Yep, I'm digging it. Instead of this, it's just G for the game, right? Mm-hmm. And it's not... Update, it's render, right? Or is update? Yeah, is so that... update is conventionally what I've called this just because there's an index on the systems and I just okay. export them all like that. Um, Could we ever have a system that has an update and a render? Uh, yes, but uh, right now there's no system interface, right? There, there's the systems aren't. They're, they're just functions that are being exported right now, so we can make right. them do whatever they want. They're not they're not objects actually. Okay. Um, not pre-render. Uh, player health bar. Um, but the question is, where are these actually getting updated? Right. Where is that mm. update being being called? I see. Um, so yeah, it's kind of right. We're not. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and right now, it's all the entity manager, right? So. We could make the entity manager have a render. Well, it's got get renderables, right? It does have get renderables, but there's no reason why this needs to be separate from, like, this could be the rent. We could make like a world render system. That that's what this is. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. That How sense. does that feel to you? So so. Not bad, actually. Yeah, it doesn't feel bad to me either. And, and then debug draw could also be mm -hmm. a system as well. Um, so really what we're talking about is, I mean, entity manager is like basically just quickly becoming the game, right? Well, interesting. Does that, does the play field, player health bar fit here? I guess so. Hmm. It doesn't need any state of its own, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no reason why we need to create a new entity for it. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the idea behind the ECS system is that you don't need to create a new thing. It's just logic that runs on separate state, right? I think yeah. maybe what feels a little bit weird is that this feels highly specific rel relative to everything else. 
Mm -hmm. um, but I would like to say, is that okay? Like, does this all need to be super abstract, or could we literally put like really granular stuff here? Let's give it a shot. Okay. Um, now, we we're gonna have a we're gonna have a render order problem unless we make render a system as well. Yeah. Why don't I um? Why don't I do this? Let's try and let me take this. And put it here. Sorry, the game's gonna be broken for a little while while I. That's yeah. Yeah, while I kind of take care of all this. Uh, where's the mat 2D here? Okay, that was nice and fast. Uh, for the game, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and import. Um, You can import player health bar from the systems index. Yeah. Hmm. And for now, I'm just going to stick this system update in a weird spot. And that's not, is it G or is it this? It is this. Good call. Um, and it's having a hard time, so we're going to try to recompile, see if there's any errors. Uh, I think the player health bar actually has a bad import with util because it's uh, not a relative. It is a relative path. And we need vec2 and a couple other things. Sorry, my VS code's just kind of crawling today for some reason. Hmm. So weird. Show to me. Cool. All right. Um, so uh, that was pretty cool, actually. You know, mm -hmm. like I don't think we need this um, entity, right? Uh, I agree. At awesome. least, at least as we have this system of uh, mm -hmm. this pattern of doing ECS here, it's just another thing that looks at the game state and does its own thing. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, I think it's actually a little bit like. Re React a little bit, where like React just there's like state in your UI, and then like you just add components that subscribe to that state. It's a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. um, if we wanted to, we could. If we wanted to make ourselves feel better about not having to like spell out each one of these things, we could actually create an interface for a system that is common, and then mm -hmm. runtime instantiate those interfaces and push them into a queue or something like that, right? Yeah, that feels a little a little abstract right now. I do like how the entity manager reads. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe the reason not to put the health bar system in here is because it's just not an entity. These are like the systems that act on entities, if that makes sense. It does. Um, Though I, the player health bar reads from the players, so maybe it does act on entities. Right. And, and, and so... Um, what, if, what ends up happening is that the system has become detached from ideas of entities, right? You could have systems that do all kinds of stuff that aren't entity related at all. Mm -hmm. um, and what they end up being is just essentially um, kind of fixed pieces of logic that are updated in a specific order that act on the state. And the state is just all the components. 
And the components could be your world simulation of entities moving around, but it could also be your UI. It could be the thing managing your uh, the thing managing your, your your like world transitions and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, all all that really matters is that like it's easy to read and you know you can easily find where things get updated. And so expressing uh, the player health bar as a system, but then kind of like splaying its update out here is a little bit funky, right? Uh, but if we wanted to rectify that, what we'd want is to basically um, put this stuff into a system as well, this world render stuff. Yep. And, and then it, we start to blur the lines a little bit, right? Because the renderer does have some internal order of operations, right? You do want to do the clear first. You do want to set the transform once. And yet the concern of like rendering all these like game object renderables and rendering like the cursor or rendering debug draw, those are all pretty different. And you'd almost want those to be separate systems as well. So like how do you how do you model the fact that they do share some stuff in common with the idea that they also I think cover relatively different con business concerns as well, right? Mm -hmm. That's a little tricky, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. Systems could be hierarchical. Like you could have systems that that update other internal systems. That hmm. that could be the way that you you do that. So like the outer system is just like the renderer system, or the at least the like this is like the outer outer render this is like clear the clear the screen kind of thing and then this one is just specific to stuff that's in world space right mm -hmm. um, so it, like i'm not saying we can do this we have to do this right now but one thing you could do is you could just say look i'm just going to do my entity render system my particle render system my health bar system which is in a different different view space different space mm -hmm. and then my debug draw which is back in and that that actually oops i was gonna draw this broken one. yeah it's broken now right oh great yeah yeah i was gonna say it also should render on top of um yeah it should Trigger. be the last thing that renders i think well, the, the UI should probably be even on top of debug, right? Uh, the React UI or the uh, health UI? The health UI. Oops, sorry, I put a W in there. Uh, it, it, it just it really kind of depends. Like, we should render it after, after to, to make sure that we don't break this. But we could also just set the transform again, right? Like, we could just. I was thinking more since we do painter's algorithm our debug renders will start painting on top of the health bar. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I, it's definitely last. It's almost as if we want like two different kinds of debug draw. What we want the that? UI, you want the UI debug draw and you want the, because mm -hmm. you may want to debug draw in the UI too, if, you're, if your UI is looking funny. Yep. Um, in, in essence, we have two different render worlds, right? We have the render world of the game simulation, we have the render world of the UI, they both have their own debug draw system that you want to draw in their space, right? So, right. Then. Gotcha. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but for now, this is great, right? This we have our we have our health bar, really kind of cool. That's super cool. Yeah. Then we're losing health. Oh god, we're losing health. I want the health to be slightly more transparent. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm now kind of like in the realm of like we're gonna do this. We're gonna like do it. Remember that the transparency is getting, it's got a, it's a 0.7 on top of a 0.3, so it's not yeah. quite, yeah. Nice. Now I wonder, that feels pretty I, good, yeah. I wonder what it feels like to close the loop on this and add the death UI and like press R to restart. Like get a little text on here and see what filling, finishing the game loop looks like, because I wonder if that'll inform how the rest of these systems sort of fit together. Yeah, c c sorry, can you can you repeat that one more time? Yeah, just like if we were to put uh, a death screen and an instruction that said press R to restart or something to like re to reload the simulation, uh, would that, I'm curious how 
you know, it sounds like one more system and something that's sort of keyboard monitoring. Maybe that's a third system for like life cycle. Um, yeah. But I'm curious just sort of what that, I think if we add that, if we'll get a little more clarity around like rendering systems and how the loop is happening right now. That sounds really good, right? Because I think what you're talking about is a system that has very, very specific, mm -hmm. uh, it's like actually a state machine, right? Oh, yeah. True. Right. Yeah. Is that that is the game loop? Like, yes. Is, is the game running? Is the game dead? Yeah. Yeah. And so, where do we model that? Is that a component, for example, like the player, or do we let let it live outside? I feel like if some state should exist, but can that state be inferred from the rest of the game? Like, is it enough to say, look at the player? If the player is dead, then show the pop-up. Otherwise, if the player is not. Yeah. Is there any other global game state that we'd want? Like, is there a score that ticks up? And, like, I guess you could watch, you could count it by dead entities, but also it's probably easier just to increment a counter. Yeah. Um, boy, this is a rich topic. And then how many of the systems do you want to continue update, updating while you're in that different state? Right. Oh, that's a great point. It's it's nice for, I mean, a lot of the systems shut down too, but it would be nice for the movers to finish off and then that might be it. Shooters, so shooters, like the shooters don't need to don't keep working. Yeah. yeah. Damagers and damageables can stop. Yep. Though if bullets are actually in flight, those two have to keep running too. This, this is actually a really nice way because right now the shooter looks for the player existing, right? But instead, turning the system off when the player is dead is like a much cleaner toggle. Yeah. So what if the systems live outside of the entity manager? Mm -hmm. And then we just make sure we call, we, do we do the calling here, which kind of is its own system if you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what if we did this? Well, my computer's really lagging right now. Hmm. Um, in a way that really it hadn't before. I, 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 I do sort of suspect this is Tuple um, eating my lunch here. I'm going to turn but, it down uh, to 1080p over here and see if that helps out at all. Oh, yeah, that might help. Um, and then okay. really, this was all this, mm -hmm. right? Now we're back to normal. Oh, because systems go and search out their own entities, huh? Yep. Huh, OK. And then entities.update, this this calls everything, right? This is really like entity cleanup, which could be its own system, right? We could factor that out. Yep. Um, and then and then the entity manager really just becomes a bag of entities. It's really just the array of entities, right? Yep. Um, and and maybe, maybe it's a place that if we want to put better querying or searching into entity types or component types, uh, it could still provide value as a manager. Yeah, it's like a component manager at that point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, the emitters run, that could be its own system. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the render runs. Uh, the separation between the update and the render is useful because we may need to update multiple times before we render. Hmm. That's that a net plate. Uh, uh, okay. Kind of. If you, if we if we don't do like fixed frame rate, and like if we rendered at thirty fps, right? We set set. I, I think the browser kind of like answers this question for us because the browser right now is in, enforcing like a very strict heartbeat for us. Mm -hmm. Um, but if the render was really complicated and it took too long during the render pass to actually like render the canvas, um. It might have been two frames worth of simulation that we passed, and we want to render twice if you want to make it feel. Oh, sorry, we want to update, simulate twice if you want to make it feel smooth. Oh, does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, yeah, it does. Huh. And then down here, we just need to make sure that all of this stuff is stateless, 
right? All the render stuff, which it basically is. Mm -hmm. Or if there's state in here, it's really more about internal upkeep than it is about like affecting the, the, the simulation. And as long as we have like a firewall between those that, that state, then I think we're good. Um, cool. Yeah, uh, what's the other thing I was thinking about? Uh, I mean, I mentioned Netplay briefly, right? Like in Netplay, basically you're gonna have this get called on the server, but the server is right. never gonna render, right? That's interesting. So that that yeah. actually makes that distinction pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Even though this is sort of system like, it could be just that the difference between update and render is we have two different categories of systems: some that are called during the up, what we consider to be simulation, and some that are, that are called in what we consider to be the render. Hmm. Yeah. And again, if you actually think about it, like the systems are just functions. And so all of this was was a way for us, to, like, if we had written the whole game in one giant text file, all we did was just put it into a different. Uh, <laughs> all we did was put it into a different file, right? Because um, like, True. if you think about it, like the systems here are just taking the game as it's they're taking like the whole state of the world, basically, right. uh, to be able to to mess with. Neat. Which is fine for now. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, okay. However, we are now talking about having a different state, right? So we're basically saying that there is some state of the game. Mm -hmm. State to general, maybe that's a game state, even though we're in the, the game file. Something I like, like game that. state, yeah. OK, uh, and then. Is it like ru running, paused, dead? Yeah, we don't have a pause yet, really. So let's just say dead. Oh. Yeah, player dead. Something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the game has a state, which is its game state. Mm -hmm. The game state putting. Mm -hmm. And now we get into the wide world of state machines. <laughs> Very common. Um, it's a very, very common uh, thing that you're about to see here is uh, the entire, all the game in a switch, in a, statement. A switch statement. Yes. Not surprised. And we did want to do transform and it probably happens all the time, right? Mm -hmm. We're saying motion happens all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, things shouldn't stop colliding. This is going to get tricky with ordering, right? Um, mm. Things shouldn't stop play. Right, all of these. Yeah, even damager and damageable, I think, keep running. Because if there's a bullet in flight while the player is going, the player dies, it could still hit like a turret on the other side. Mm -hmm. Right, and you want to spawn stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. So that seems a little silly now. Can you say that one more time? Oh, uh, is it silly that game.running only affects the shooter system? Uh, it's okay. I, I think the okay. structure it, it feels a little heavyweight, but eventually we're going to have like some stuff in here to deal with the dead player, right? That's true, and I guess there will be a lot of as we have more systems, some of them may stop. At a lot of watching. So. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Um, and you know, you might not want any of these to continue killing each other, and so we may actually have to like factor out visual mm. effects mm -hmm. and side effects versus actually like, like I've often thought, I think the damager right now does the damage. Is that correct? 
Yeah, what is damageable? Da damageable removes itself from the playfield. And maybe we we do want the explosion. Mm -hmm. Well, no, we don't want it to die, right? We, so maybe damageable is actually something that doesn't go all the time, right? I was thinking. I was thinking if the player's dead and there's a bullet in flight that's about to kill a turret, maybe it kills it, the we turret. should kill it too. Okay, yeah, that, that's yeah. fine. Okay, um, but we, we don't like want a, like attack logic to be processed. Yeah, as I say, if we had like a scorekeeping system, like I would expect points not to go up while the player is dead. Yeah. And then motion will be interesting because, like, the player while well, the player's dead, I, I, I guess we don't. Um... But bullets need to keep moving. Bullets need to keep moving. The, yeah. the player is removed from the from the queue, so it basically isn't processing input anymore. Something like that. Right. right. Yep. Okay. Um, whether we want to express this like this, or we want to redundantly just like list the same things in both states, that's going to be like a style question. Okay. Um, I can imagine that like having it like this is more dry, mm -hmm. but it's also kind of like you have to start to think a little bit. It's like, uh, like what's in, what's out? Like, is this in the right order? Right. Uh, but if, but depending on how many of these things, maybe you can't not, you can't avoid doing some of this style of like putting a switch statement in between the systems, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it can also maybe not be a switch too if we just need to put ifs around some systems, like if this does say just- Oh, I love operate. that actually. Yeah, yeah, actually that's probably better, right? That's um, that's what this is, right? Yeah. And it lets us control where the player dead state um, systems run. Yeah. Because we don't have that many states, right? A switch statement mm -hmm. is helpful in for like five entity, states, yeah. entity UI, where you're going to have a ton of different states, right? Hmm. That feels nice. OK. What is it grumping about? Uh, Probably nothing. I bet it's going to figure it out in a second. Yeah. Yep. There we go. OK, so when we die, we want to change state. Mm -hmm. But like deleting entities, we probably don't want to change state in the middle of the game loop. We want mm -hmm. to enqueue a change ah. and then move to the next thing, right? Mm -hmm. Right, the, entire, the loop should run as if player is alive. Right. So when do we try to detect this for death? Do we put it in? The player doesn't have its own damageable, right? We have like a common damageable right now. That's correct. Yeah. And it deletes the player. It does delete the player. Yes. Uh, OK. Could, it could be in the entity manager mark for deletion. Uh, we could look in entities mark for deletion in the update loop to see if the player is in there. Oh, wait. The damageable system is a system. We have access, we have we have global knowledge. There you go. Yeah. Ah, sweet. In the game. Let's do sorry, I'm just going back and forth. I'm trying to find the end of the constructor here. Mm-hmm. Which is I think right here. Uh, in Q state change, is that too, too verbose? No, nah, I mean, could it just be what? set state, like a, like react, Ooh. but even that's an in Q, right? Yep. React. I think we're, it's reasonable. So it'd be like this dot next state equals hmm. S, right? And then next state is an option, because we don't necessarily have it defined yet. Yeah, in fact, when we read from it, we should probably like delete it, right? Yeah. Does it need to be set for that? Oh, yeah.
sum that. Yeah, it, it ch checking if next state is present there. That state is next state unwrap. Next state is none. Oh, we have a whole. Uh... Does this callback execute before all the systems, though? Oh, it's a map, not a call. Uh... Does that work? It must. Yeah, the the map is just saying like if you ha if you actually contain a value, mm -hmm. then then run this stuff. But if you don't, Great. don't run it. Right. Great. Hell yeah. Okay. Now I'm seeing the benefit of ECS. I'm feeling a little bit right. Like what I, what we do here is if we say if the entity ID that we're on, right. If id equals 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 g dot player dot and the player has to be there. <laughs> mm -hmm. The player has an id. It must. It says the player. Right? What is the player? Oh, the player is a is a maybe. Yeah, you gotta. Okay, we'll do the same thing. G player dot map player. Uh, if player dot id equals id nice. dot q uh, set state right oh yes set state game state dot player dead nice okay it's just it's just taking forever great. Um, Game state might not be imported. It is definitely not at this point. Might not even be exported. It is definitely not. <laughs> Good gotcha. call. Oof. And you know, eventually, especially when we do net play, we're going to try to figure out like how much of this is framework versus how much mm -hmm. of it is is content. Now, right, right now we have like a pretty tight coupling between those two mm. things, right? Like game state, I don't know. You could you could make the right now it's it's very, very coupled to like the fact that there is a player to begin with, right? Mm. There's probably like Okay, so Ooh. we hit a null there, right? The player was dying. Game state is not defined. Because the import never happened. Yep. Yep. Nice. Right, because enums, it's a TypeScript feature, but it's actually a constant, right? It does render code, yes. Yeah. One of, one of the few things in there that does, I think. So they should stop shooting, right, as soon as you die. Uh -huh. Nice. So, which they do because the shooter does it. So let's exactly. actually take that out of the shooter. No, the shooter itself has a check for the player, too, I think. Or uh... The shooter script for the turrets? Mm, probably. Yeah, it maps the player. Which, it maps the player. It might just need to. Uh, but the player is always defined, right? It's never unset from the game. So. It's marked for deletion, isn't it? Yeah, but that, that removes it from the entity manager. It doesn't remove mm. it from the game, right? Because we kind of track the player twice. We have two different references. So uh, if you. If you uncomment or if you comment out the if around shooter, they keep firing after you're dead. They do, yeah. Oh, so I, I thought, yeah. Sorry, I thought that wasn't happening already. Yeah, this will be a nice litmus test of whether or not we actually did anything right now, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's all. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to get my red green test going on here. Very sensible. Player health bar needs to go down all the way to zero. You notice? Uh, mm -hmm. Is it? Oh yeah. It's updating, right? It's. I what find is, that. Um, yeah. What is 
this that player is set to in the game yeah currently? It, it it is the actual player right it never gets unset from the game huh that's weird because it looks it feels like it is did the game crash it didn't crash if you if you can move the cursor around the renderer is still happening. oh yeah the render is still working true can do you can enable debug draw and the player's still there you can see the line of sight right only some of them see it that's fascinating that is really interesting huh i have questions that's cool hey if you move the cursor does it follow the cursor no you were just yeah. very conveniently on the same spot yeah okay uh They did stop shooting though, right? They did. So when the player is marked for deletion, what happens there? And this time the health got to zero. Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, does the entity manager do anything for the player when it's deleted? Or do we maybe like do something? No, entity extra manager kind of doesn't know about the player. Yep, looks, that looks true. In fact, update means nothing. Great. Huh. Uh, that is, well, let's take a look at the turret. Can we look at the shooter system as well? Yeah. One second. So this should be shooting still, right? The player's there. So how, how is the player there? How does the player have a transform if it's deleted, right? Like. So just to let you know what deletion does. Deletion, I, thought, I thought we actually tossed the whole object. Mm, mark for, deletion just removes, it removes the entity from the to delete. No, it removes it from this dot entities. Like it, it uh, this, sorry, yes, it removes it from this dot entities, and then this dot entities means that it's not going to get picked up when the when the systems iterate over en entities, right? Okay, so, so, so player so player has two references. It's re it's reference. It's got a strong reference in the game essentially that's keeping it. Alive. Yeah, if if we did a querying system, then mm -hmm. which we probably should, like we'll just tag the player entity with like the player tag, yep. and that's how we'll get the player every time. That that sort of makes a little bit better sense. <laughs> Because that's why it's confusing right now. And anytime you have two yep. pointers at the same thing, it's difficult to reason about, right? Yep. Like the whole programming language of Rust is designed to, to basically not let you do that, <laughs> uh, for better or for worse. Um, so we have a mystery, though, right? Why do the shooters not continue to shoot? Yeah. So you said take a look at the shooter system, right? I was. I'm curious what's going on there. Probably nothing. Nothing interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it just picks up the script, basically. Now, why um, the player, like when it's dead, it can't move, so the movers also stop, and you can't shoot, so that stops. So mm -hmm. what's killing? Some, something is something is taking it out of the game, too, because otherwise I'd expect a lot of things to keep going. Yeah. Um, so maybe, maybe it's somewhere in-game, because a whole bunch of systems stop functioning pretty quick. Do they stop functioning? Like, what other systems do we care about? Um, uh, you shouldn't be able to shoot anymore. And you can't move. Right, but the bullets kept going, right? The bullets uh -huh. kept going after you died. So they're being, they're continuing to stimulate even now. Yeah. Oh, this is why the shooters don't shoot anymore. Because they iterate over the entities. Oh, and look for the player. They, they uh -huh. look for the player as a potential hit, which is not anymore, obviously. That seems reasonable. Yeah. OK. All right, All right. so uh, unfortunately, the only indication that we're going to have that the shooter really stops simulating right now is if we can't, if we like log during the update, right? I'm OK with that. Yeah. I feel like I feel like I feel safe that that is happening. Yeah. Uh, I mean, really. If you if you had like AI brains and you just wanted like watch the brains kill each other in the background, mm -hmm. maybe you still want the shooters to like continue working, right? Maybe, yeah. But let's we can turn it off for now at least. Yeah. Okay. So we need actual. We've successfully transitioned states, 
but we need something to actually happen now, mm -hmm. right? Um, and not only do we need to do that, we need to do something like once when we enter a new state, right? It's almost like a componented mount or sort of thing. You know, like we need something that like initiates mm. this mm -hmm. and sets up a bunch of stuff, right? What do you think you get set up? Because if it's like a render system for a death UI, and it might not need much, it, right? We do we do want those to to loop. Like we'd want that render and the anything watching the keyboard to be updating. Mm -hmm. So what so changes besides the state? You're right. There's no other state that needs to change or gets yeah. up here. Uh, it, we might need to like. Yeah, I guess we're just rendering stuff, right? If this dot state equals 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 game state dot player dead, mm -hmm. what are we looking for logically? Looking for key press? Yep. What's our keyboard look like? This dot keyboard? Sorry, I was doing command K because I'm just used to ah. Slack. <laughs> We have up keys, right? We want up keys, letter R. Mm -hmm. Uh, key code S key. They put an ASCII table in here. That'd be nice. Is it ASCII codes? I don't even think it's ASCII, right? No, it's ASCII. Key R is 82. Is that right? Yeah. Eighty-two. Ah, interesting. Keyboard keyboard codes are just to give you all capitals for the keys. That's fascinating. And here we set state game, uh, yeah. Right. And really, this is more of like, we need a full reset here. I expect the function gets a little deeper. So where you actually stick the logic for entering the state is a bit of a conundrum, mm -hmm. a fully mature state machine has logic that you run when you enter a state, logic that you run while you're in the state, and logic that you run while you exit a state. Mm -hmm. And I think all we care about right now is state entrance. Do we want to reset the game? Is that basically what we want to do here? That's what I was thinking, yeah. Um, should we move all of this initialization crap into what happens when we enter the game? Oh. So we clear yeah. the entities, we clear all that stuff. And the first thing the game does is set state to running. Yes. That's cool. OK, let's do it. Um, so what we want is to like basically have a Like initialize. It's not. It, it's it's like start play, and we'll find a better name for this, right? Mm -hmm. And then what we do here is we switch here. Call start play. Nice. And then, um, really, what this would be, this would, we'd sort of flip this around and uh, game state none basic, basically. Mm -hmm.
is not it's a little bit confusing because like the we're in a we're in a constructor and technically you're not really supposed to call other functions in the constructor yeah um, and but what we could do is when we create the game where do we create the game index uh main tsx main main sorry yes um oh you're thinking right there game dot set oh shit i love it huh right cool. Let's just start the keys here you gotta you have the car you gotta turn the ignition right makes sense uh so we don't even need to set next state right uh we just need to set it for purposes of oh it was our yeah it was none for right. purposes of like all of this stuff needs to get set to some fake value i, for, I forgot that none isn't like a nullable yeah yeah and then this oh. crap we need to grab right all of this uh-huh um Neat. what do we not need uh i feel like that that's good. The terrain is good right now. Because we're loading the same map, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, Entity Manager needs to be new, right? Uh -huh. Emitters. Emitters needs to be new. Camera. The camera does need to get reset, right? Yep. And the but player needs that... to get reset. Oh, yeah. Now, does the camera just need to be... Can the camera be good? We just need to set the position. We don't need a new camera object. Uh, correct. Let's, Same difference, though. The camera is kind of... Unless there's state we want to carry over from the previous... I was just thinking it's fewer things have to be optional on the game object if we make them in the constructor. I see what you're saying. Yeah. OK, so let's keep the camera. Yeah. And, and dimensions, I think, actually is very, dimensions is real. Because when we create the player, we actually set the camera to player position, right? We do that already. Right. Uh, populate entities. Now we're talking. This actually needs to happen every single time, right? Yep. We need to recreate the entities in the entity yep. manager. OK. Um, sweetness. So all this stuff. Nice. We rip out. Uh -huh. And that's in start play. Mm -hmm. TypeScript's going to be mad because we're not setting these, these things up. Mm -hmm. um, player can be none, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm losing. And do we just make these optionals or options? Uh, I think optionals. Options adds a lot of extra code, and that'll work right now. OK, that'll work for now. Yeah, I'm actually debating whether or not really all that option gives us is the one line convenience of doing maps and, right. the, uh, and the safety of not doing bang. Safety of not doing? Well, we kind of unwrap, which is basically the same thing with a lot more keystrokes. True. And so it does save us a lot of code, actually. But I actually think its main value is that it, it leaves no ambiguity between, not, between null and undefined. Mm -hmm. Like, JavaScript has this terrible thing where like, you can be either of those things, right? Yeah. I guess I'm, I'm not super worried about those two objects. Oh, yeah, I'm not trying to argue for making them optional. Great. I'm actually trying to debate whether or not we should just get rid of options entirely in the game. Oh, no, like, I really like, I like oh, options, actually. Okay, you like, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I, basically, I just haven't convinced myself, like, when is it appropriate to do, like, optionals versus options? Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. that's the open question. Fair. Um, all right. So map uh, needs to be something, uh, where do we get the map from? Get it from the constructor. Oh, it's dropped in there, so we should save it. Just save it, yeah.
Nice. Okay. Does that work? Holy cow. It almost seems a little bit too good. Let me die. Let's see what yeah, let's find out. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> it worked. Wow. I actually hey, that's... kinda can't believe that. That's cool. That's TypeScript right there. Right? If, if, if we didn't have types, this would just be like, we'd be here for an hour and a half trying to figure out what we did wrong with a bunch of console.log. Isn't that incredible? I, I love it. That's amazing. Yeah. So why is the player health not always going to zero? You can die with one segment left. Damn it. It happened like three times in a row. <laughs> All right. Now we can't make it happen. Yeah, exercise for, for future bugs. Yeah, try to repro it, right? That's fine. OK. All right, so you want to show a little overlay now? Yeah, let's drop that in there. Oh, I guess all our this dot entities need bangs to silence some mornings. Silence. So I think this is here to stay. Should we get rid of that that linter error? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's kill it. Um, how do I do that, by the way? Yeah. Yes. Config. Uh, yes. Uh, strict knowledge. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Cool. TS config allow unwrap. I'm sure it has something to do with unwrapping. Yeah, it's a uh, ES lint no non null assertion. How do I disable that? Oh, it's ES lint, not uh, TS config. There's a problem. Oh. Uh, so put it after uh, import order, because we want to start with the. Uh, this one? The, yeah. And then this is, sorry, I need to get that again. Yep. Oh, I can't copy it. Can I quick huh. fix this? Disable this for the entire show documentation. Let or me disable for the entire file. Yeah, just copy it out of that. And then let me just yeah yeah. This is pod racing. Uh, how do I disable? What is the? Uh... Um, <laughs> I should have shown the documentation. Uh, es lint disable warning. That's probably that one. Oh, uh, it's like, what's the opposite of error? Off? Ignore, maybe? I see off. Is it off? Yeah, try off. Just the string off, no, no array. Because the array is only when you want to pass args. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, I know. <laughs> Awful. That is terrible. Um, Let's see if it's fixed. I'll just pass my end to find. Oop. Oh, that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's still... a real error. Yeah. No warning. Expression expected. No, nah, no, nah, it's just catching up. Yeah. All right, well, I'll, I'll go through and, and, and do that. But it looks like that warning isn't happening anymore, which is good. We you, fixed it. I think you got it, yeah. Um, Whew, fix the warning. Let me tell you that the road to hell is paved in allowing different types of things. 
I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if this comes to bite us. But the nice thing is, it's so easy to just search the code base for exclamation points to see where we're doing it. Yeah. That I'm not that bothered by this. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was actually complaining about this schema for ESLint RC here. Like, oh, I know. I, know. I, 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 I think that this should be this. Um, but I don't yeah. know. I guess they can do union types. Like if you look at JSON schema, it does allow you to do like any of statements where it's like this property is any of. And well, well, I, I think it's it's probably not union type. This is like JavaScript primitive. It's like is a string or is an array. Yeah. And, and they're just checking for that. And that's all they got. But you would want to like, I mean, yes, Lynn is like a big project. You want to like schematize. You want to be able to like lint an RC file, right? Like you'd want to be able to. I think you can. I think it's worth. I think it's worth the trade-off of being able to one line enable and disable yeah, features because everything has enough. defaults. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hear you. Uh, okay. We're not going to worry about the warnings for now. I will nah. fill that in after stream. Let's try to get something at least on screen for the cool overlay. Overlay. Uh, quickly, uh, canvas text. Yep. I have that question. Drawing huh. text. We're going to re-implement HTML here. I love it. Yeah. Stroke text, fill text. Oh, that's hilarious. And we okay. can set the font as well. As long uh, as you want serif, serif or sans serif, you get And then places. how do you set, I guess you have to do your own wrap, right? You'd have to do your own line breaks and that sort of thing. I think so. Oh, my god. Text formatting is uh, a pretty harrowing uh, ah, sub, no, sub problem. not when you can measure text, though. Oh, my that, god. That, that's the key. You got to do this on iOS all the time. Measure text? Yeah. And then, well, well, you measure the text of, of one line, right? You don't, it, it's not like it's going to render, it's not like it's going to do line breaks for you or anything like that. No, exactly. You have to, like, measure it to, like, that's pick why. two words, measure. We only have of, one yeah. line anyways. Yeah. Uh, it just says you died. Yeah. Uh, OK. So, game, in the rendering, in the UI rendering, our UI rendering is here, right? Mm -hmm. If this.state equals 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 game state dot layer dead, I'm actually going to propose game over. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we need a new primitive. Oh, wow, we do, yeah. I mean, we could just call these functions directly, but I'd rather create them. Nah, do, do the primitive. We'll put more text on the screen. Yep. Uh, render text. Hmm. TypeScript is really good. I like it. I, it's, I'm such a fan, man. Um, and then stroke text, this is like the position? Yep, so we have a position, uh, a style, which is basically font. Oh, and that will do color as well? Great question. Does it take a fill style? Go back up. I bet it uses fill style and stroke style. I bet it does too. Yeah. Um, so we want so, font as something separate. Mm -hmm. And value or content? Yeah. Uh, Text.text text with that. No, I think it should just be text. Right? Text. Yep. Yeah. Uh, line 44, you need capital text, and then you're good to go. Uh, huh. Word. And then our renderer. I love it. It's pretty straightforward. This is a cool little render you wrote. Uh, thank you. Text. And then uh, we do have to transform everything, don't we? We have to transform it to world. Yep. Even though we're in UI space, we, we should be consistent here. R dot pause. Mm -hmm. 
what is this dot transform? Oh, that's like the camera. This is the camera. Yes. It'll be the transform of the renderer. So yeah. Uh -huh. um, and then we just do this dot ctx dot font equals r dot font. Mm -hmm. This dot ctx dot fill, fill style. style. Mm -hmm. R dot style. Uh, ctx dot stroke text. Uh, of fill text. Fill text. Yes. Sorry. This dot ctx hmm. fill text of r dot text vpos zero vpos one. Nice. Font is not a. Why is it line or text? We need a break. Ah, yep. Put a, put a break in text just for good measure. We'll be happier. I agree. Good call. Nice. Um. So now we can, all it takes. Yeah, so let's uh, let's go to the game again. Okay, well, here's here's the fun one for you. Do you want to draw it in the center of the screen? Because we have to measure it. Let's cross that bridge. <laughs> I just want to get something drawing right now. Okay. And then, uh, but I know, where you, I, know what you, I know what you're getting at. Dot render of primitive is a primitive dot text. Mm -hmm. The text is, you died. Mm -hmm. Love it. The position is, let's just do 100, 100 for now, right? Uh, mm -hmm. um, and then the font, I'm just going to copy what they're saying here. 48 pixel serif style is magenta. Or is it red? We should do red, right? We should do red, yeah. Kill me. I have a death drive, a very strong death drive. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Uh, Holy shit. Okay, the Dark Souls font is called Optimus Princeps. <laughs> what? Fucking Dark Souls people, man. Princeps. Princeps. Probably 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 uh that is it. How much do we have to pay for this? I know, right? I mean, this is Print caps because it's like Latin, right? The C's are all. Uh -huh. is it, was it Julius Kaiser? Is that? Oh, is that, oh that, no. That's where the oh, Russian I Kaiser like comes from. Yeah. <laughs> and and Cicero is Cicero, I guess. Huh. That's hard C's. Did you did you play Assassin's Creed Odyssey? I played the shit out of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Are you kidding me? I well, like all the names are pronounced so strange. They did a really good job of like hitting. They're like, this is the authentic pronunciation. And I'm like, God, literally no one called them that. But thank you for doing this. Like the, reading the subtitles and reading the name, I'm just like, those are two different words you just said. Well, they say it's Socrates, right? Socrates, there, oh, man. Yeah, there's been, there were some that were even weirder. Um, yeah, Marini, there's a lot of good ones in there. But I enjoy, I enjoy how authentic their accent is. Oh, man. That game is so good. I'm in the middle of it. That's fun. Did you play? Are you playing female? Are you playing Cassandra or Alexius? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because it's super gay. Uh, you're playing Cassandra. Yeah, I'm playing Cassandra. As as like a like a lesbian Cassandra. <laughs> I, I'm playing. You know? I'm playing Cassandra as like she picks up everyone she meets. Cause... Yeah, oh yeah yeah okay yes sort of pansexual. I I, yeah. I love that. Yeah yeah sort of like a, a more enlightened time, a more enlightened period of humanity. It fits really well with Greece, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pansexual, and then like when you wanted to kill somebody, you killed him, right? Like he was just like <laughs> very yeah, simple yeah. and straightforward. There's a bad guy on every island, and kind of yeah. gotta die. Yeah. The politics were very clear. Politics was reduced down to their essential form: my friends and my enemies. <laughs> I help my friends. You know, and yep. then I kill my enemies. Yeah. Murder, murder the enemies. Uh, yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. Although no, the politics are actually super complicated because then you just like swing back and forth. You're also not only pansexual, but you're also pan, 
mercenary. National, yeah, yeah, you're pan national. You're just like I'm gonna kill the Spartans one day. I'll I'll kill the Athenians the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. Uh, are we okay with this for now? Like, do we want to because we're getting a little bit close to the hour. Um, I'm okay with this for now. I think it should be. No, that's actually kind of nice because it's it's like near the health bar. Yeah, I'm digging it. What at least is the API you'd want for centering text? Mm. For the I primitive. think I think it'd be it'd be okay if it was if we had to calculate the position for this because you could you can plug this function you can plug you plug this and this into get the width of the text and then calculate it based on the viewport so. So the renderer would have to have a function on it that says, "Give me the, give me the size of the text," something like that, because the renderer wraps the context. Oh, if you wanted, to, I was thinking, I was thinking just between lines two hundred three and two hundred four, just get the center of the viewport, get the width of the text, and subtract half. Would so? Would you want to do something like, like a line? Yeah. Yeah, align like relative to, and it's basically just like, how does it align relative to this position that you pass in? Something like right. Well, or is it is it aligned to screen space too? Hey, I don't know. Can you give it a position or an alignment? Maybe is that what you get? Right, because and you want to do vertical alignment. Like you'd almost you, you do need to know the width of the text though. Like, and yep. that's a tricky thing. So maybe there's like different rendering styles for different texts. Yeah. Um, because I can imagine text in the world space as well, right? Like, we, who debug draw? Uh, yep, exactly. And we wanted to have put, like, the, like the, the entity IDs over these things, something like that. We'd want to oh, be able to be do cool. that. Yeah. Yeah, right? I yeah. Say? I mean, ca calculating the width isn't too terrible, right? Because it, oops, sorry. No, it's OK. It, it's fine, but I want to do it inside the renderer, is what I'm saying. Ah, OK. As opposed to burdening those details, bur burdening the, the, the game code with those details. OK, then, then I think, yeah, if, if the text took a position or an alignment, then one or the other would be Could my... be both, right? right? You, you, would, you may want to say, like, ah. So like we give it a position, and then align it around the position. Like, do, how do we interpret the position? Is that like the upper left corner of the text box, or is it the center of the text box? So in that case, would you be, could the position, is it OK for this to get um, the center of the screen? Like, if we passed in center of the screen and said align center, that would be nice. That would be, that would be exactly what I would want to do. An H okay, align and a V that. align, right? Yeah. Um, because I'd want to do that for, like, if I put names on these guys. Mm -hmm. I'd want to just say, look, give me the center point of the, give me the registration point of this guy. Mm -hmm. Go to the outside edge and then just like render the text center, like centered vertically or centered horizontally, and then aligned. Treat that position as the bottom of your text box or something like that, right? Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So cool. you just have like an H line V line, and it would default to left top. Yep. Yeah. Or you could do like classic CSS where it's like. The align is a two-word phrase, like center, center is how you pop it on the dot. Oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. That, that sounds good, too. Yeah. I'm trying um, not to mix too much HTML into this, but our styles are like RGBA values. so like, <laughs> It's true. Although with the alignments, like you can imagine doing an enum in that case, and just have like an enum yeah. of all, like it's really just four different combinations, right? Yep. Yeah. Or, well, no. It's no, three times three, nine, nine combinations. Yeah. Yeah. Minimum, center, maximum, and then two dimensions, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Well, okay. I am really happy with the progress today. I, I came in great. like not knowing what to do tonight. Uh, and then we have nice. the health bar, and we understand the ECS system a little bit better now. Yeah. Uh, and and, we and have the entire game resets itself now. It's really Yeah, sick. and we have a state machine, which is fantastic. This is really exciting. Still a game. Game. It's more of a game now than it was before. It, yeah, it's more. You can pick levels. You can. Yeah. We're gonna have to do a better. I, I do want to move my level picker somewhere else. <laughs> ah, look at that. That's so cool. That's great. I just want to feel it once for myself. Yeah. Yeah. I. It, it's. It's so funny. I. I so badly want to have a console, and then I realize, you know, we have a console here, right? 
you know, we could call it reset or whatever. how do we, so how do we expose our game to that? Do we need to like toss game onto window? Yeah, we, we do. Uh, yeah, we can do it now. Let's do it. Cause it'd be really cool to be able to mess with the game here. Uh, it's main.tsx, right? Yeah. Oh, right. That's this is the right right. place to do it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. gonna, uh, This is one area where I think it's okay to alias here. Um, nice. Yep. And then, can you, can you drag that up? Dot... That's behind my face. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I should probably just like get like a fake just rectangle. Put a sticky note on your yeah, monitor yeah. there. Let's see. Um, G dot. Uh... Debug draw. Yeah, like, we can Holy do all kinds of stuff. Shit. Um, but, is, oh, I love it. Cool. What we probably want to expose here is, yeah, we could do the full game, but like, there's probably a CLI interface that's friendly that will allow us to push stateful things. Like, if I want to like have debug draw that like is persistent and not just draw in one frame, mm -hmm. you know, like we probably want some interface for that, right? Yep. Yep. But I like I like that now we have it, so we can start like thinking yeah. about building building helpful functions in. That's sick. The console. Excellent. Very I cool. feel like we've 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 opened up a lot. We've kind of like chipped away into like a new vein of things to work on uh, mm -hmm. today. Because now we now we have game states, we can actually do all kinds of crazy crazy stuff. Yeah. Maybe my question for Sunday is like, what is it? What? How do you win? What's the win state? Yeah. Yeah, we've got the lose. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna uh, do you know, one more thing for today. Yeah, I really want to make the little guy that runs outside your tank too. So. Uh, oh yeah, that'd be so fun. Yeah, I'm I'm still very interested in that. Oh. Inventory. I want an inventory system. Oh yeah, gosh. Um, sorry, really I good. want to do one more thing here, which yeah, is. Totally. Just to too, too chunky. Way. It's a little chunky. Yeah, that, uh, that, that's a health bar. This is yeah. a health bar here, and I want to die one more time. Absolutely. This is the, this is the where we should close the stream. Is you died? You died. Yeah, that's All our right. gift. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, thanks for streaming tonight. This was great. Yes, thank you, T Dom. All right. You had dinner stream. earlier before the stream. I I ate before the stream, so I'm not so. I'm angry. glad. I'm glad you're not starving now. Fantastic. I've learned. I've learned. I've got this nice. I've got this nice window now. I have a job. It ends at six. I can eat some food and then stream. It's actually great. That's awesome. I would hear more about your job off, off stream. Yes, but I'm not going to broadcast it. <laughs> All right. Great. Goodbye, everybody. Stream off. <laughs>